What is up, Fanatics? It's 8 p.m. Mountain Time, and that means another episode of Home Theater Fanatics Live. Tonight, we've got another superlative episode for you. And today, we're going to feature Gabriel Hernandez from Atlantic Technology. Now, if you guys are following the channel, um, you'll have noted that another Atlantic uh, Technology video has just dropped. So we looked at the 8600 series speakers, and Gabe was guest star in that video this was his big theatrical release right i mean he got his sag card and whole deal he got lines yeah. you know and he'll get the residual whole deal it. so welcome gabe how are you i'm doing great man thank you and you know what that 60 second countdown just see way more impressive all right you're you're cutting out just a little bit darn oh, internet no. Oh, just a little bit. I mean, there's no magical charm that All you right. can do to make it go faster. You just have to look, cross your fingers and be like, work with me, internet deities. Um, but yeah, yeah you let's know that, hope. That, that intro music is, you know, it's like, let's get going. And right. The whole idea, though, is so that we're just not talking to empty space when we start. Right. Right. You know, there are actually some people on. So, but, and it works really, really well. So, um, in any event, glad to have you on. Um, but I'm sure there are people out there that are like, who is this dude? And why would I care about this dude? So who are you, man? Who are you? All right. Well, my name is Gabe Hernandez. I've been involved in uh, the audio and video uh, for the uh, consumer market for almost 30 years now and uh, been heavily involved in, in integration and design, customization, consulting, all kinds of uh, avenues around that. Um, big passion for movies, big passion for music. And so it really helped uh, maybe mold a lot of my approaches to things and how I attack stuff. Uh, run a company uh, besides handling the rep stuff for Atlantic. This is a company that I've had a long relationship with. I also have my own integration firm called Echo Home Theater Group. And so we're just, you know, Atlantic's one of our big brands. We're happy to promote it and talk about it and um, just really excited to be here. And I really enjoy getting to play. You you bring me on board to do some cool stuff. So it's a lot of fun. Oh, it, I, I absolutely love it. I'm really glad that you're, I mean, Gabe is like just on the other side of town for me. And, you know, of course, that's still like it's half an hour away. It's, it's so far. But no, it's fortunate that, that we're both here together and we're both into this stuff. You know, it's like, yeah. what are the odds, you know, to find someone who's into it, that's interested, that'll do, you know, live streams, streams and some videos and stuff like that. So it's really kind of cool. And, uh, you know, you, you have this really great uh, relationship with Atlantic Technology. And, uh, you know, this yeah. was a company that I knew nothing about. I mean, oh, other than, hey, look, I saw them at Cedia. I, I don't think I'd ever heard their equipment outside of Cedia before until I right. came over and we did that soundbar video, right? That was the first one, the, uh, the gate yeah. crasher. And yeah. then uh, from there, the 8600 5.1 series with the double 12 right. sub and the bipolar surrounds or dipoles, however you want to set it. It was in the world's largest center channel. <laughs> <laughs> Trademarked. It needs largest. handles. It does, you know, if it had handles, it would be better. It would be, it would be so cool. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's I'll, I'll industrial, there's some industrial designer right now going, no, no, this is not right. PA equipment. Don't listen to these but, guys, uh, they're wrong. But it would be cool. Maybe, maybe you can talk a little bit about AT, Atlantic Technology, and, and let folks kind of know what's, sure. what's up with them. Because I think there's going to be a group of people that don't know, right? Because I didn't know, and sure. I like to think I know a lot about the the niche, but I didn't know. Right. Well, Atlantic Technology is a is a pretty old speaker company, at least relatively speaking. So they've been around for thirty years, and just over thirty, as a matter of fact. And they really sort of hit at the dawn, I think, of what we now consider home theater. So they they their tagline used to be the the original home theater company because they were building speakers for that specific application. So it wasn't just trying to figure out if you're trying to do some type of theater environment at home, you know, what am I using to do that? And they were building products with that in mind, with that design. So they had relationships with THX. They were doing a lot of work and design 
specifically for those types of environments because they wanted to be able to be the, the go-to speaker for that. They've never been in big box stores. It's always been on the custom and integration side. So I think that may be where some of the exposure has been harder for people to get to, but they've got a long right. history. And one of the best things, at least for what I've enjoyed and, and, and my awareness of them as a company, that there were a lot of things that I think that they tried to do or maybe even you know, tried first and experimented with and got some things out of the way. And, and I know, you know, they were probably one of the first speaker companies that I ever used that was doing an LCR, a left, center and right that were in a singular cabinet because all of a sudden you had in the in the late 90s and some of the, in the early 2000s, you had a lot of these flat panel TVs and everybody's looking at these giant speakers and these center channels that can't sit on anything now. So everybody's improvising shelves to mount above your center channel so you can put one up there. And then you're still tr trying to figure out where to do right and lefts. And then Atlantic says, well, what if we just take three of the speakers that we already build, turn them sideways, put them in a single cabinet? And we probably did uh, two dozen systems that first year that all used that. The sound was good. It was a brilliant idea. And then as you started to get into more of these articulating mounts, you had a brilliant way to have the sound actually turn when the television turned. So if you had a, a, a more open you know, family room where you needed some versatility with the television, your front stage stayed in line with the TV because it was mounted directly under the TV. So it was, it was a very cool speaker and we really enjoyed using it. But some of my first exposure was with some of their THX designs. So they had a couple of... THX speakers, they've moved into some ultra once that became a thing. They had some limited lines once that became a thing. And they've they've kept most of those lines intact with some few cosmetic changes, but they really haven't changed their speakers a lot over the last probably 15 years or more. And recently they've started to play a little bit now because you've got so much computer aided design, so many things that they can they can really experiment and try things differently. They're able to give us some new technology based on years of experience, years of reputation. And I think that, they, you know, as a, as a consumer and as a guy who loves their stuff, I'm better for it. I think we all are. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I, I was, you know, recently boxing the, the 8,600 series stuff back up to, to send back. And, you know, I, I was, I was crying while I was doing it. I was like, Oh, oh no, Whoa, I'm going to miss you so much. You One, because so you probably threw out your back. I was going to say, yeah, you went so much and you hurt my back when I was taking you yeah. out of the theater. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, uh, it, it's tough to, to pack those back up because they, they, they sounded great. I mean, they, they, and, you know, after the video was done, I still kept them out for a while on just more tweaking and tuning and stuff with those yeah. guys. And uh, it just uh, it just continued to get better and better, especially on the bass side, because I spent, you know, a couple hours and I really worked at tuning and, and getting that subwoofer per perfectly aligned. Right. Yeah. And um, and I got it flat way down to, you know, under under 20. So it uh, it, it worked out really well. So let's. Uh, it's so it's let, a beast let, of a sub. Yeah. And one of the things I think that I've liked about their subs is that they 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 really do a great job with subwoofers. I think in their whole line that they really want a sub that doesn't necessarily draw attention to itself. So if you've got your crossovers right, if you've got placement right, it's almost invisible. You almost can't tell that that's that's the that's the thing making the base. But they really tend to stay in control. So I have as of yet never been able to push an Atlantic once properly dialed in to a point where it sounded like it was fluttering or it was working too hard. Their subs are just authoritative and do a great job. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. And, you know, I, I think I mentioned this in the video too. I was worried. I was like, oh, this just isn't going to do it. This, uh, this isn't going to have nearly enough guts. And, <laughs> and then, you know, when he got it going, I'm like, all right, it's, it's, it's doing it. <laughs> it's, it's got plenty of output. Yep. So it yeah, I, was, I was, I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, so let's uh let's say hi to a few people that are that are here. Uh so Parker Hemming up in the house with us. Um we got Double A. He's here with us and uh, always always happy to to have Double A here. He says that the uh the the Atlantic Technologies look a little bit like the Perlistens or maybe the Perlistens look a little bit like them since I I think they're the the newer product. Um yeah, it was vastly different technology. The stacks are a lot different, but yeah, yeah they, I guess they look a little a little the same. Um he also asked did rail reschedule um not yet. <laughs> they they said they will, but not not yet. 
Um, and I, as, as I leave on vacation tomorrow, uh, we'll, we'll see, it'll be, it'll be a little while before I, I get that worked out, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, let's see who else is here. Hi-Fi Haven. Another, uh, guy here in Colorado with us is, uh, with us tonight. So always a pleasure awesome. um, to have uh, hi-fi Haven with us. Joey Peacock from Indie Audio Labs. He says, yo, yo, Atlantic tech in the house. That's how I always think he talks, right? I sold a T love the AT or THX speakers. Yo, good call, man. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it looks like he's, uh, you know, got some love for Atlantic technology yeah. as well, good. especially back in the day with uh with the thx speaker line that's kind of cool um and uh, jim's jim's here with us and then uh facebook user very very secretive guy apparently but he's here with us so i'm glad i'm glad to have him all right okay now one Andy thing i want to talk about is wants me to give you a system for your house so i yeah <laughs> i wasn't going to call that out but <laughs> I would I not be opposed. I saw. I, I would not be opposed <laughs> to that. Um, and just like Hi-Fi Haven says, he likes three-way uh, center channel design. Or, I, I do too. I, yeah. I I think three-way is the the way to go. I'm I'm loving it. And uh, he says that since the center channel handles seventy percent of all the audio for movies, it better be big. And I agree. I mean, if you can't handle your your vocals and anchor that to your to your center and get it right, then you know the entire experience is diminished. Right. And uh, oh, Paul's just jumped in. What's up, Paul? Hey, Paul. glad to have you here with us, man. What's going on? Long time no see. I don't know that I've seen Paul ever here before. I don't think so. Maybe he's a new guy. Welcome, Paul. We uh, we 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 love new folks. And then uh, Jim's like, he. I think Jim has done everything in his life. He has done a lot of cool <laughs> stuff. And uh, he uh, he used to rep AT when Peter was there at the very beginning. That's cool, man. That's that's awesome. That's super cool. Yeah, so see, let's it's uh, a club. It, it is a club. It's the AT club. And I feel like I've been missing out on it because I really was. I mean, I didn't know, I guess you don't know what you don't know until you know that you don't know it because somebody points it out and they say, uh, uh and, uh, you know, uh, our, our, uh, friend in common, you know, the reps Atlantic technology, he was all like, Hey man, you know, what I'm talking about, right? He's like, you got to check this oh, stuff yeah. out. He's like, you gotta, you gotta look at it. And he, he was totally right. Um, so I'm going to share this screen so we can just look at a little bit of the product portfolio that we've got going on with these guys. Sure. So Chrome tab, like technology share. All right. So, Oh, there we go. So right off the bat, we've got the gate crasher. I assume that's the three. Yep. Boom. Gate crasher and three. I actually just saw that somebody was asking that question. So there is the answer. So the wireless system that we're playing around with, with the gate crasher system, it's based on this um, LC. <laughs> CR soundbar, which can be a completely standalone device. It's on Wi-Fi. It allows you to do Spotify. You can do Tidal on it. You can throw from your phone. So you could, uh, you know, you can basically grab your iTunes, play them through the speaker. Um, but it uses a wireless technology that isn't widely used except in the pro market. And it's called SCA. And it is an uncompressed wireless system, has very good range, but it allows your devices to have very low latency, very high quality sound being transmitted. So Giles and I did a video where we pulled these things out and looked at them. The, the finish on them is fantastic. They just need power. So you're just plugging the center channel, the sound bar in for power, the LCR, the surrounds in for power, subwoofer for power, and then they will link together and they operate on SCA. And then the whole system will find and grab when you turn it on. It works amazingly and it's very versatile for setup. And then and if you try, you build a whole SCA um, ecosystem out of that. If you wanted to do SCA in different rooms, you could have a pair of speakers in another room. You could have another gate crash or another room and be able to link rooms or have rooms do individual things. But as a quick and easy wireless setup, it, it is amazing. And then your placement becomes, you know, you're not restricted by anything to get it set up. So it, it was definitely a very cool one for us to mess around with. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, and it, what's really funny is when we were first setting this up, we were overthinking <laughs> it. And we're like, oh, it can't be this easy. We, we really? got we to gotta make some extra stuff up to do. And now if we, we just did. follow the instructions. We're looking in the books. It's got to tell me what to do. And then literally, you know, we're like, what if we just push this button? And then everything was connected. And then we felt really dumb because we lost some time there. Yeah. And and the price on this is is really good, too. I mean, 879 I mean, that ain't that ain't. I mean, that, that ain't chump change, but it's also not like $5,000 crazy, you know, 
It isn't. It isn't. And again, I think some of the versatility, certainly the build quality on it and, and the fact that you can build something off of it very quickly and easily. It's mobile. So, you know, if you're living in an apartment or you got a family room where you can't do a lot with, you're not going to be drilling holes. This is an easy and quick way to go. And you're keeping it within one family. Absolutely. Okay. So this is a, a total uh, digress, but this comment, oh, um, there's a, uh, there's a set of books written by R.A. Salvatore and they're Forgotten Realms novels for the D&D stuff. And they, they have a character um, who is a dwarf druid who has like a uh, speech weird thing going on. And one of, <laughs> one of the very few words that he'll say is the word, Ooh. And the way that the, when you listen to the book on tape or audible or whatever, the, the way that the, the, the voice artist does it, it's all, he always, the, you know, this guy goes, Ooh, <laughs> see this and I'm all, this all I hear in see. my head is, Ooh, it's like, Ooh, <laughs> so hilarious. Oh my God. Sorry. Um, oh, here, here's a tech question on the, uh, the gate crasher. How do you get sources in? All right, so you've got an HDMI input that's that works off of ARC. So you're in this case, you're going to be using your television as your main switching for your video sources, but you've also got an optical input that you can feed in, and you've got analog right and left channel inputs as well. So then you can cycle through the different inputs. But if you're strictly using it in the in a in a video type of environment, everything's going to be routed through the television, and then your ARC, your ARC channel is going to return into the soundbar. Now there's also a uh, if you want to run if you want to use apps from your phone you can get a Correct. SCA dongle for your phone plug in and then just whatever you've got on your phone you can use that as well because we, I think we went through that entire exactly. setup exactly so even there's a, we didn't there's a gate crasher app we did we messed around with the SCA one too and we didn't need to but there's a gate crasher app that lets you pick for example play whatever's playing on your phone and then you're able to grab and throw from your phone there so I'm able to play iTunes that way I'm able to you know grab title that way if I haven't logged it in on the gate crasher itself. So it can be done that way. The SCA app is, they joke that it's the app that you never really actually need. But what's nice about SCA is that it gives you the ability then to bridge rooms. So if you're doing singular rooms or, or simple spaces set up with SCA like this system, don't really need it. But if you wanna get other rooms involved, having the app is nice. And then there's a dongle and a variety of dongles that you can use for different things. So you can get a SCA dongle that's an optical out. You can get a SCA dongle that's USB that can plug into your computer. So you could even use some of these SCA speakers as computer speakers and transmit to them via these dongles. That's cool. Now, one thing that, uh, you know, there's a question about this and, you know, this is something to think about. Have you heard if there are any uh, inklings that they're going to add some bouncy speakers to the top of this thing for that, you know, kind of Atmos effect out of a, out of a soundbar. I, I think if it's going to come, it's going to be a separate generation. So right now this is, this is what we've got with this guy. So I think that they're, they were just looking at this as sort of a workhorse. It would be interesting to see if there's a way to enhance what the chipset's doing maybe, and that you can sure. add another set of those surrounds and tell it that they're actually Atmos speakers or back surrounds or something like that. I, it would be nice if that was an evolution in there. I don't know if that's in the works or if that's an idea. So we'll see what comes down the road. Right on. Very cool. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the other stuff we've got going on. So, uh, you know, looking at floor standards, yeah. um, you know, this, uh, this was the crazy center channel that, that we were talking yes. about a little bit earlier, super, super huge. Um, and then here are the 8,600 ELRs. And uh, okay, and here, here's what I was a little bit jealous about. Your, your pair, the set you have in your home is yes. this color. And it, yes. oh, I don't, I don't know if, can I, yeah, there we go. That it looks Macassar so good. Ebony is gorgeous. Yeah, I, I really it, like it, it a lot. It kind of accentuates it and adds, yeah, it's, it is pretty. And it makes me not ever want to give these things up. Not for the life of me. And okay, some crazy stuff here. So, um, you know, you can see the the face of the of the cabinet. So that's four eighths, and I think two five and a quarters in a tweeter. Yep. And then if you look here, you see the grill. That's magnetic, but that grill has got to be like fifteen pounds. 
Oh, I mean, it is heavy. Yeah. It's, it's basically a sheet of, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it feels like it's a metal sheet and it just sticks right on there. It's, it's beautiful though, and definitely adds a little bit of heft to it, but it, it's also not terribly easy to pull off. So not a lot of risk that you're going to damage it or the speaker, but you definitely have to earn it to get them off of there. Absolutely. Um, you know, let me see a couple other things that I don't, I don't think they've got pictures of this. Uh, maybe they do. I want to, I want a picture of the, the rear, but they, they don't show the terminals and all the switches. No, I don't think so, there's a back panel. Yeah. 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 There's no back so panel. In, for in, oh. a, in, a, in, in quite a few of the speakers from literally the 4,400 series um, bookshelves and up Atlantic in their towers or in their, what they would consider a floor standing speaker have built in a couple of controls. This one has something unique that the others do not, but what they've built in is you've got a boundary compensation control. So if you're putting this inside millwork or a cabinet, for example, you've got the ability to compensate for the fact that you have now surrounded this with barriers because most of us know putting a speaker into a box is a terrible idea because suddenly it sounds like someone's talking from the bathroom. And so you're able to correct for that. You're also able to correct it if it's just close to a wall and not boxed in. Then you're also able to compensate for how bright the room is. So maybe if you've got too much reverb, you can tone it down. If you don't have enough, you can try some enhancement. What the 8600s also offer is a switch to compensate if they were behind an AT screen. You and I joked when we were doing the review on them, they're kind of too pretty to tuck behind an AT screen. But a if bit. you wanted to, it could be done and you could flip a switch to then correct them for that placement. That yeah, that that's cool. And like you said, I see it here on the 8200, it's on the 8600 and the 4 and the 4400s have it too. Yep. That's so cool. all the way that's down cool. to the bookshelves. So until you get into the little bookshelves, you've got that feature on all of their speakers. So not only do the towers have it, but their 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 companion center channels also have the same thing. And when you think about it with a center channel, that may be the ideal one to have it on because more often than not, we've got a piece of furniture in the front of the room and the center channel is likely sitting on a surface or inside an opening and you've got the ability to correct it for its placement. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, that's so the, that shot go. of the center shows the exact, that's basically the same panel on the towers as well. Right on. Yeah. Um, now, as far as new stuff goes, I think they, they just released, a, a, was it architectural speakers? Is that right? Or so they just remember. released a brand. Yeah. They just released so Atlantic's just released a brand new series of architectural speakers built on what the system for the 8600s has. So you've got the matching um, uh, mid range driver, you've got the matching tweeter set. So it's a higher order center. Yeah. They're they're uh, You've got a, a tripole, what they call the tripole surround. And this guy's a super versatile surround speaker. You can treat it as a bipole or dipole speaker with a dip switch on it. So once you've installed it, you can set it up for, you know, however you'd like it to tailor. If you're doing music listening, you want it in bipole mode. If you want, you know, whatever you can, you make the adjustments. That speaker will also do wide range stereo so that you can treat it as a broader spreading stereo speaker because of the two tweeters or you can treat it as a single channel stereo speaker because of the two tweeters, because it's a dual voice call design. So you've got all this for, and you can see, yeah, you can see the two connections right in there. So you've got a series of jumpers on it. So this is a speaker that you could use for high fidelity, like in an office or something where you didn't want to have speakers in the room, but you still wanted high fidelity, but you, you, maybe you're limited to speakers that you only want. You've got a single location. So you can put a single speaker in there, get stereo playback out of the two tweeters and the dual voice coil and, get it in a nice, in a basically a very nice design with the higher level um, drivers that they're using in the 8600s. That's cool. Right on. Yeah. And it looks like it's a, available at an eight inch and a six, a half, six and a half inch. That's uh that's nifty. Correct. Yep. All right. So now, uh, now my, my favorite thing, the subwoofers, and I, I guess we just, <laughs> there's a lot of, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> just, yeah, just go straight right. to the SBT 1000. So this is what two active 12s, a thousand Watts Correct. of power. Um, yep. and it's just, it's just wrecking stuff. So, uh, sealed. Yep. Sealed and it's, yeah. uh, you got, you got a hundred and it weighs about 110 pounds. So it's you and a buddy putting this thing in place. 
Pr- pretty much. Yeah. You have to roll it like end over end. If you're just doing it by yourself, <laughs> um, which, which I, I did twice. <laughs> oh. Oh. I don't envy but, you brother. I, I stole a kid and had them help me right on. Yeah. No. And the specs are, are pretty much right on, you know, it's got a, a, a selector between max SPL and max range. And I, I ran it always in uh, max range because it, it had plenty of SPL and, you know, it's solid down to 20 it hertz, really did. looking good. Yeah, it was so it was it was good. I liked it. Um, I, I think that actually the the SBT 500 with tens, if it's really solid down to 23 hertz, I think that's even more impressive. Um, I've not seen one of those in person, but, you know, it's you know, it's what, 18, like four inches smaller on every dimension right. and half the weight. So that's yeah. uh, I mean, that's pretty, pretty darn good coming out of tens to get down to 23, yeah. uh, you know, at an appreciable volume. I, I'm, yeah. I'm down and- with that. And I think that, you know, and you and I were talking about even with the measurements that you'd pulled with the towers and with the sub Atlantic, we've always tended to kind of err on the side of caution when we spec them. So, you know, if it's saying 23, it's probably very legitimately happening at 23. That that makes, that makes a lot of sense to me. And, and I agree. So let's, uh, a couple of things, a couple of notes here. Uh, let me remove that. Um, the center looks as good as it sounds. Um, I, I like the look of it quite a bit. I mean, it's it's big, and you got to have a really big spot for it. Um, but but it sounded really really yeah. great. Yeah, I, I'm I'm good. Um, rather, a yeah, tower. I mean, the sound center. quality for voices was natural. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so but yeah, I, the I agree. Channel is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I would if I could use a, a another 8600 tower as a center, I would go that route um, <laughs> as well uh, and put it behind the screen. But you know, if you're using a television or whatnot, that's not not really an option. Um, so, right. you know, in, enter the horizontal center channel. Um, but yeah, no, I, I agree. That would, uh, that would be cool. Um, double a says, Hey, he wants a demo in, in Michigan. So Gabe, <laughs> let's get you on the road. Uh, it's the road show. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and a question around, uh, you know, any, uh, Dante, uh, in the future. I mean, that's super pro when you get up into Dante, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I guess we'll see. And then uh, Dally Mandrum has joined us. Uh, I don't know if that's a, a good wizard or a bad one, but uh, but but he is definitely mystical. Uh, so I'm glad to to have him here with us. All right, now with that, it's halfway through the show, and we're going to now move on to a little section that I like to call content corner. Oh. Nice. Now, let's take a break and stroll down to a cozy little place I like to call Content Corner. This is where we talk about all the cool content we love to consume. And this week's focus is Lil Dicky. (laughs) So, my, my question to everybody out there is who knows the rapper Lil Dicky? If anybody, uh, oh, it's Dallas from a period. He totally, oh, it's Dallas. What's up, Dallas? Um, another cool speaker dude out of the Pacific Northwest. Um, and he is a wizard, by the way. But anyway, enough of him. And we're back to Little Dicky. So anybody familiar with, with Little Dicky? Uh, you know, a YouTube kind of phenom on the, the rapping side of the house. Um, well, lo and behold, I did not know this. Um, his real name is, uh, and I, I cut and paste this into my notes, uh, David Andrew Bird. So Mr. Bird, a.k.a. Lil Dicky, a.k.a. Dave, has a television show on FX. And it's Gosh. kind of a you know satirical take on his life. So it's quasi-autobiography. How do you say that? Autobiographer? Biographic. Thank you, God. <laughs> I, I knew I kept you around for a reason. Um, so, you know, it's, I, I think it's just kind of a, a, a fictionalized version of that to kind of make it interesting. Um, but it's sure. really good. I mean, I, I am, l- yeah, double A says Jewish rapper. Absolutely. He is a Jewish rapper. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've watched, I think, the first six episodes. And uh, I, I've been staying up late, you know, last three nights, just plowing through these things. I'm like, oh, I got to go to sleep. But, you know, I find myself uh, still up. Um, oh, the so binge. The, yeah, I know it's the binge. Uh, now, what I want to do, though, and I've never done this before, but I'm going to attempt 
to apply the patented home theater fanatics ratings, movie ratings to a television series. This has never been done before. So don't try Step this back. at home, ladies and gentlemen. This could cause severe bodily injury or at least mental fatigue on the part of the listener, one or the other, right? So um, the sound quality on the show, I give it somewhere between a zero and one out of 10. It's a television show. And there's nothing special about it at all. Visuals, I give it a zero to one out of ten. Action, zero out of ten. Horror factor. Um, it depends how you really think about horror because this isn't like gore or scary horror, but sometimes it's cringe horror. So you go, oh, so I guess it really depends how you classify horror, but I'm gonna give it a zero out of ten in the classical view. However, Next is the comedy section. And I give this a nine out of 10 because oh, it's absolutely marks. hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Now, um, moving on to the heartstrings uh, classification, zero out of 10. And the new one that I added, because I have to, add, I had to add this for this show because you, you can't really understand how to consider the impact of this show without this rating. And I added a lewdness rating. So I give it a nine out of 10 lewdness rating. I know I, I, I several times when I watched it, <laughs> I went, <laughs> um, you know, I had, I had one of those reactions. Um, so, you know, the average on this is probably down like around 1.8 or something, <laughs> but, uh, but, but if the laugh factor of, is good. Oh, the laugh and the lewd uh, is a lewdy laugh. Ooh. A loody laugh. Um, so solid, solid nine out of 10. If you're into just, you know, kind of rank comedy that's probably targeted for 13 year olds, um, I, I, I'm, I'm in. I'm totally, I'm totally in with that. Um, he asked, was it funnier than the last Kevin Hart movie I read? Oh my God. So much funnier. So much funnier. I mean, this is like next level funny. Um, compared to the Kevin Hart, the Kevin Hart was like a a heartstring comedy, a cry cryomedy, crying comedy, cry comedy. It was a cry. Was that was that fatherhood? Yeah, yeah. So I, I did fatherhood last uh, last week. I haven't actually watched any cool action movies or anything that everybody wants to hear about. I've been watching, you know, drum, you know, rom coms and. <laughs> and feel good movies and and now a tv show about a jewish rapper that nobody's ever heard of they're all like dave who's that that's actually the theme song to the movie dave who's that dave who's that um <laughs> it's pretty funny um okay so that's all i've got from my point of view but gabe you gotta save us man bro us up you know give us some okay. testosterone here so something. nothing nothing new for me to throw out there but I watched Tombstone for the first time in oh. probably a decade. Western. And that, okay, that is definitely mm. that is definitely calling for a 4K release. It's still not on the horizon yet, but the Blu-ray looks great. The sound is incredible. And certainly Val Kilmer's performance is Oscar worthy and it didn't get even a nomination, but it is a great movie to watch and really enjoyed it. Loved the the footfalls from the horses was thunderous. The gunshots and the shootouts were amazing and rang around the room. So that that uh, the mix that they've got on the Blu-ray is fantastic. Dude, I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your Huckleberry. No, I, I haven't seen that. Probably. Well, I can't let it be another 10 years. So you need to come over and we'll watch it again. Oh, uh, that, you know, I, I was thinking about it. I, uh, I haven't seen it in forever, uh, a very long time. Um, but I think I'm going to start trying to schedule like some watch the movie in the theater kind of get togethers and whether that's at somebody's house yeah. or at for a theatrical release for something big, but I want to watch and, and sure, some of the people, cool. you know, people will be in for some of it and some folks will be like, no way, but I want to do like a Dune because the new version is coming out. So I want to watch the old one, yep. the extended cut. Um, so I've got that on Clyde escape now and re ready to rock and roll, Ooh. but I'll be putting that together. So, you know, folks that are in the, uh, the Colorado region, you know, I, I can host three people at my house because I have four seats in my theater <laughs> and I'm taking one of them. So I had three spots. Um, 
Uh, but uh, you know, maybe that's something we can get together. That'd be cool. And then, you know, for the big theatrical three theatrical releases, we could all get together at, you know, some yeah. Atmos theater, maybe up in uh, let's Highlands just make Ranch it a something. rotating party. I can do people here too. Yeah, I think that would be super fun. Uh, super, super, du- super duper fun. All right. Now we've killed our content. Um, and oh, yeah. So he said, uh, double A says, Dune, the old one is insane. It literally is. Um, I'm your Kwisat Haderach. That's right. Nice. Um, people are like, what? You've got to watch it. You have to go watch it. This is everybody's homework. You have to go watch the original Dune. Not any of the television stuff that was on sci fi, but the old one. Who was the director? Um, that was David oh, Lynch. Yes, David Lynch. Man, you're brilliant. I like this. I'm a you're movie awesome. junkie, man. Yeah, I, I love it. So the you have to watch the David Lynch version. Um, so that's everybody's homework because I'm going to be all about Dune. And when Dune's out, I'm going to do like a whole episode just dedicated to Dune and what I thought of it. And I'm going to do like a montage of photographs. And yeah. It's just going to be me kind of like this the whole time, you know. Um, so, yeah. And I'm yeah, glad the, AA most, is excited. Most of the visuals on on the, the classic Dune are unbelievable. Lynch was a master at his game and it, it's, Have you it's heard just, of? It's a, but I will say, as a, even a guy as as a fan of that movie, I still I have to watch it in chunks. I cannot watch it all the way through. I start to lose it, and I have to go do something else, and then come back to it. Really? Yeah. So um, here's okay. Here's something that uh, let me let me let me see if I can share my screen real quick. And this is a little bit of uh, trivia. So let me share screen Chrome tab. All right. This Jodorowsky's Dune. Oh yeah. So this, this was the Dune that should have been, right? So, um, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm just gonna. So, does can anybody identify who this artist is? You, you've got it. You've got to know who did that that image. I gotta check because. Because one of my friends was a storyboard artist in cinema, and I know that he knows Jodorowsky, but he worked on things like Fifth Element. So I, I'd have to check with him if it's his stuff, because I know that I don't know what capacity um, he's worked. This with is him, a super you know, when he worked with him, but super famous artist, super famous. Did uh, did all the alien stuff? Oh, is that Giger stuff? Yes, it's Giger. Wow. Giger did all of this. And wow. none of this stuff ever made the light of day. Wow. Um, it just, oh, just amazing. So if there was one movie that I could go back in time and make actually happen, this this is the one. I mean, the, I mean, this and there's a uh, you know, maybe so there's a uh, there's a uh a, a short film about this movie kind of a documentary style uh and that might yeah. need to be part of the lead up to the oh, next yeah. dune movie because folks that haven't seen that yeah I'll, I'll i'll get a copy of that uh somewhere and oh yes good good times um ugh. all right moving away from content i promise we're done uh now we're going to move on to the tech question of the week i should have some music Uh-oh. for this that's what that's what i need yeah so so tech question of the week. All right. And so I edit this into like a separate video. So I'm going to like act like I'm, I'm doing this for real. Got What's it. up fanatics. So today we're got, Oh, that's bad. What's up fanatics. It's time for the tech question of the week. And today we've got Gabe from echo home theater. How about that? Yeah, that's right. And we'll do that. Today. Yeah. Different. Yeah. Hat. That's who you are right now. Yeah. Put that hat on. And my question for you, because everybody wants to know, and this is a pretty common question is, I'm not sure how to place my subwoofer one. What do I do with my one subwoofer? How might I place it in a spot to optimize its potential? All your base are belong to us. There we go. I had to say that because you told me to. That's right. I did (laughs) because I was laughing about it. It just sounded, it's like one of my favorite stupid memes. It's a guilty pleasure. And Oh, I love it too. Yeah. The idea made me laugh. So what we've got to consider is that it really is, it's sort of the tough one to play around with. All the other speakers in a surround setup have prescribed placement. There's angles, 
that are uh, that are vital for the reproduction. So, and it's because these are standards that are used in recording and mixing it. So the engineer is following those standards when he's recording, and every studio is built on that same um, recommend. You know, that same requisite. The one that becomes the trickiest is the subwoofer. There is no prescribed placement in the mixing anything that they can give you because it is the one that is most dependent on the room it is in. So it's going to be unique to the room that it's in. So they can't just say, this is where it goes. You need to put it at 45 degrees and that's what it's going to do. So it really doesn't even matter. You know, it's, it's low frequency pressure builds up at boundaries. So we know that. So we know that obviously getting near a wall is going to change. It's just like we were talking about with putting a speaker in a cabinet changes tonally how it sounds. Same thing's going to happen with a, a subwoofer. So we want to find a spot where we can maybe maximize the potential. So some of those ideas is, you know, the front corner that becomes sort of that staple location because that corner is giving you what they call the tri-vector. I've got three barriers right around that subwoofer that are going to boost and maximize that. So you've got different room modes because these waves are massive. When you consider that the bulk of what you've got is that exciting bass that you're listening to is in that 40 to 50 hertz range and a 50 hertz wavelength is 22 feet. Now think about your family room for a minute. Not many of us are dealing with a room that's in that size ratio. So a good chunk of the base that we're trying to produce is larger than our room, which is even reacting against the walls. We're kind of stuck. We've got sound that isn't happening where we need it to happen, where we're sitting. So we're worried about these standing waves or these nulls where the sound just doesn't even exist. So if you think about these waves having to have a peak and a bottom out and then another peak, you know, as it crests, you've got areas in the room that are dead to certain frequencies. So a lot of times you're wondering, you know, why am I sitting in this? Why do I keep having to turn the subwoofer up? I don't have base where I'm sitting. That may actually be true. So by turning it up, all you've been doing is turning up the frequencies you can hear at that spot and annoying everyone else in the house who is sitting on the nodes for all those big frequencies that aren't happening where you sit. So in a perfect world, and you and I have talked about this, Giles, a dimensionally designed room is the way to go. So if you can start from scratch, that's how you do it. Because mathematically, you can now design a room that works best where you're smoothing out those waves and changing how, you know, making it more predictable. In a compromised room, which is all of our rooms, I think, for the most part, we want to know how to get the best possible base. So we got to do that really before we've decided on a screen size, before we've decided on acoustical treatment, before we've decided on seating position, because that's the guy that is going to be ruined if we do it wrong. So there's a couple of easy tricks. One I mentioned, you throw it into a corner, but it isn't just uniquely the corner that's going to decide that. You've got to be looking at seating placement. Rule number one, easy one. And this becomes more difficult when we're in a small room. You've got to be at least one to three feet away from the wall, from your seats. Nothing can be close to barriers. Part of the reason that you don't want to be there is certain frequencies will be, based on the room shape and size, are going to be building there. And they're going to be much louder than the other frequencies. So I'm going to overwhelm myself with certain frequencies at the expense of others. So I want to move away from those boundaries at least you know, a one to three foot distance so that I'm outside of some of those ranges. And I may be at a point where some of those range, you know, some of those frequencies are dipping and some of them are building and I've moved into that neat little spot. One of the oldest tricks is always to dimensionally math out the room. Base is responsive against the barriers in your room, but you've got to remember our family rooms are generally wide open. We got an open side, we got an open back, depending on the layout of your room. That subwoofer is not responding to the area you call your family room. It's responding to the wall on your left, the wall on your right, which in my case is 40 feet away at the back end of the kitchen, the wall in front of me and the wall behind me. So figure out what those dimensions are and then divide the room into odd ratios. So sit down with a piece of paper, map it out, divide the room in thirds, divide the room in fifths, divide the room in sevenths, do it both directions. In a perfect world, where those lines cross each other is the spots that you want to sit. So can you move the couch into that spot? Can I move the love seat into that spot? In the hope is if it was, you know, if it's, it's again, a perfect room isn't what we've got, but in a perfect world, those would be the right spots. 
That's the easy one. The slicker one, which is a little more, I don't know, feels like magic, but it's it's kind of the cool one, but it involves you getting committed to one unique thing. You got to buy yourself a really long sub cable. They're pretty cheap now. You can find really long ones for not very much money. Amazon's your friend in that regard. So the trick is take the subwoofer, put it on your prime seating position, run the sub cable to your preamp or your receiver, run your pink noise test tone. If you've got an SPL meter, you're already cooler than the rest of us because now you can walk around the room looking like Spock with a tricorder. Otherwise, you can download a simple SPL app on your phone. You will now walk the perimeter of the room and where that signal peaks, you just found the mode that matches the one where the subwoofer is seated, which happens to be your seat. So you just found two spots in the room that correspond to one another. Put the sub in that spot. Now, we don't all have one chair. So what you basically do is figure out where that spot is, maybe drop a piece of tape or a piece of paper and mark it. Move the sub to a different seat. Do the same thing. Put another spot down. You're averaging an area that hits most of those seats. You may find that there's some seats that are way off the map. You know, maybe you got a big L-shaped couch, some of those seats, the subwoofer's got to be in that corner of the room. And some of these seats, it's got to be halfway along this wall to my, my left. You got to pick a little bit there and decide, you know, where's the most common seating? Where's my average spot? Once you've got it, either one of those methods, whether you just do the corner drop and the measurements and move your seating around, or you do this reverse one by finding the modes. Once you've got it in that spot, run your audio analysis, your acoustic correction on your receiver, or your preamp, and you're going to have, you know, you're going to get smoother, fuller, better bass experience because now you've found spots that should be working right for you. And one of them you've proved is the right spot. So that's my little trick with the single sub. So what if you got two subs? Oh, man. So what, what if I have like 40 like you? No. So well, well, here's. So, yeah. Well, double A says, what if you got five for one for each channel? That's probably overkill, but I do applaud you for doing that. So that's where, as I was bringing up, if you're doing this little base check where you're putting the sub in a seating position and you're making off spots, as I said, depending on what your seating arrangement looks like, you may find spots that are nowhere near one of these spots. So you may find three or four seats in the room that have that average out within a couple feet of each other along one wall. And then you may have another couple seats in the room that are somewhere else in the room. That's where the second sub goes. What you're trying to do is find the spots where the subs are building and filling in together. Once you've done that, again, now you got your two subs, your four subs, run your acoustical check with your receiver, and it's going to start to blend it. That acoustical software is great stuff, but it cannot fix a shoddy room. This is a way for you to try to get the room and the subwoofer to understand each other and then have that software do its correction on top of that. That's awesome. Cool. Well, thank you for telling us, you know, how we can scientifically, I guess, maybe, you know, have add some type of structure around a way to identify to put a sub or two in a spot that's going to maximize its performance in the room. Because this, right. I, th you're, I think this has got to be one of the most common questions, period. You know, it is. what do I do with my subwoofer? Where do I put it at? How, how do I make it sound the best? How it do is. I tune it? Yeah, right on. Yep. Well, well thank you. Now, and one of the chief complaints where you're saying that, you know, people don't get the base that they expected. It doesn't do what they think. Well, a lot of times that's the reason it's in the wrong spot, at least relative yeah. to your seat. You're both Absolutely. in the wrong spot. Let's fix right. that. Right on. Very cool. All right. Now we're going to move on to segment six of the show, which is clean up and announcements. So upcoming projects. I'm going on vacation, y'all. It's Hawaii time. What's up? Yeah. Um, <laughs> next nice. uh, next yeah, next week I'll be uh, streaming live from Hawaii. Uh, I'll probably be alone unless people just want to come and jump on. Um, and I'm not even sure how many time zones that's off. So to get an 8 p.m. show, it's probably like three o'clock in the afternoon or something over there. So I gotta I gotta figure that one out. Um, uh, but but I'll be uh, I'll be out. You know, soaking up some some waves, I guess. I don't know. I'll probably like a, look like a big beached whale. I think that's uh, I think that's my, my beach look, the, the beached whale look. 
Um, but a uh, uh, number of videos coming out, a number of videos in the hopper, uh, working on the uh, the triangle and the Purian audio reviews. Those are going to be awesome. Uh, the Harbottle M18X subwoofer review is completely filmed, ready to go. That's That one's in editing now. Um, I, I did a uh, uh, M100 uh, DAC review. That one is uh, is all filmed and just needs a little edit work done on it. I did a, a couple of more small videos uh, that that will, I think, be interesting for folks. So like how to bridge a Synbison FP series amplifier, because I get that question a lot. I'm like, how do I, you know, bridge this thing because you when you bridge the pro amps uh, a lot of times you have to use a different pin out on the speak on power cable so instead of using the plus one and minus one you need to use the plus one and minus two and so you have to change the end of the cable or you have to buy a bridging cable that's got the cross uh, the cable swap done in it for you so uh, a little video about that you know a little tech helper so to speak so a lot of stuff coming uh, down the, uh, the the pike here for, for new stuff. And, uh, if you watch my, uh, Instagram channel, uh, you know, a few pieces of gear came in. I've got a Klipsch soundbar that just came in. I'll be getting to that sometime. Um, I have an amazing amplifier from digital amp co. So cherry amplifiers. I'm really looking forward to getting that one. I cracked the box open a bit today and took a look at it and it's just gorgeous. It weighs like 10,000 pounds. I mean, <laughs> I, I put it on the scale. It said 10,000 pounds. I was, it, it was, it was amazing. So a lot of cool stuff coming. Uh, awesome. So uh, looking forward to that. And Gabe, I hope that uh, I'll be able to get you over to help with some of these and, and collab with that. Oh, it'll be fun. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Audio Architects is up in the house. And I'm hoping I can get him over here to uh, to work on some of the next bookshelf battles that we often do together. So I'm looking forward to uh, to that one. Glad to have Mike here uh, in, the, in the house with us today. And then I guess uh, finally... Everybody make sure to check out the notes below. Go take a look at Atlantic Technology. Check out Gabe's information. If you're in Colorado and you're looking for the home theater hookup, and this is custom install stuff, equipment, two-channel, whatever, um, he is your guy. So absolutely click, go to the website. If you need me to give you a phone number, hit me up. I'm glad to make that connection however, uh, however I can. Oh, and then... Uh, you know, we also have talked just a little bit because I want to hire Gabe to help me with a video because he can do stuff that I can't do. And uh, I, I'm talking to a company called Vessel, VSSL, and they make a, yes. they make a really cool amplifier. And they've got a new version of that coming out. And uh, I, the goal is to install this in a upstairs bedroom. Um, so it's got attic access so we can do in ceiling speakers mm -hmm. and it's not too hard. We just got to get down the wall, um, and then integrate that in, you know, that amplifier with a, a television, um, and, uh, maybe, yeah, I don't know, some other stuff and, and just be able to leverage those two ceiling yeah, channels. We'll put the whole thing together and, and show the process. It'll be cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to bend his arm and, you know, try and try and try and cajole him into helping me do that. So, so I, I don't fall through the ceiling or something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's better That's if so, I do it. It's better if I fall uh, through the ceiling. Uh, exactly right. Yeah, because you probably have insurance for that. <laughs> they people would look at me and they'd be like, "Oh, that poor dude. He should have stayed at the beach." Um, but uh, that, I think that'll be a pretty cool one, especially with the yeah, that, the technology fun. that's in this new amplifier. Uh, so looking forward to that. All right, folks. Let me uh, let me do a quick look and see if there's anything else. Uh, Dur Huddle says he's got to work at six. He's got to check this out later. Thanks for popping in, man, wherever you're at at six o'clock. I don't know what time zone that is, but in maybe, maybe Der Huddle, maybe it's in Germany and this like six yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Right on international. I work. love it. He's starting his day. I, We're quitting. I know that that's ask. See, I love how this brings people together yeah, from all over sure. the place. You know, it's this common love of this hobby that we all have. Uh, it's it's yep. really great. Um, so great advice, uh, by the way, from from you just just so you know people are people are totally recognizing that and then uh, double a says it's nice to meet you thanks nice to meet man. everybody thanks for having me man of course it, oh absolutely and uh, as i always say everybody thank you so much for your time i know you can spend it in any way that you want to and that you choose to come here and hang out with me and all the other uh, folks in the crew is awesome and i really value that thank you all gabe same for you because i got you here grilling you on the spot and uh, you're, you're making me look good. So I appreciate it. <laughs> no sweat. 
Right on. Yeah, okay, everybody. Thank you for having me, man. Everybody take have care. Yep, yeah, and we'll see you guys in the next video.